Hello trainers, today I'm a cub too because I have a cold. So sorry for any sniffling noises I might make, I'll try my best anyway. This is part 2 of me making Alolan or alternative type forms for every single Yanwan Pokemon. And just as last time, the new types are randomized to force me to come up with new ideas. And last time we stopped at the Pidgey line. And if you know your Pokedex, you know that the Pokemon next in line is Rattata. A Pokemon that already has an Alolan form. But I decided since I did say I'd draw every single Pokemon from Kanto, I'll just draw them anyway. No need to exclude them, so I randomized a new type for Rattata and I got water. I kinda just gave it a slightly more aquatic look with head fins and a fluffier fur to keep it warm in water. It makes a little more sense when it evolved into Eradicate, because I took inspiration from a beaver. I thought greyish blue would make the best color, because it's blue enough to be a water type, and also grey enough to be realistic like the other two colors of Radicate being brown and black. The original designs of Gen 1 Pokemon are quite simple, but in a good way, and I like to try to keep them that for my type forms too. Over to number 21 and 22, the less popular bird of the region, Sparrow. And the new type is Fairy. I'm really glad I got fairy type for this one, because Sparrow is somewhat looked upon as the uglier version of Pidgey. So I thought I could make it a bit cuter with fairy features and make people like it more, even though I think it's perfect the way it is. But I made it fluffier and changed the red parts to pink, so overall it looks softer and cuter. It's a very friendly but shy Pokemon who doesn't like fighting at all, so it's rare for these sparrows to evolve. As a result, Fairy Pharaoh is a rare sight and it took many years until people figured out it was actually a pharaoh and not its own species. Because it's so rare, seeing it is said to be a good omen. Pokedex entry number 23. Snake. Backwards. Ekans. So, what type does Snakey here get? Electric. So I turn it into a yellow golden snake. With an electric plug on its tail. It attacks by wrapping around its foe and stabbing them with their tail, to electrify them. For its evolution Arbok, I made a pattern resemble electrical circuits. This could be explained by it being camouflaged from hiding in abandoned power plants, or perhaps its DNA was somehow tampered with by some evil team forcing it to evolve with an upgrade making it half robotic. Or something like that. If you're keeping track, we're now on number 25. The famous electric mouse, da -da -da, I mean Pikachu. And the new type is Steel. Pikachu is absolutely everywhere, so it's kind of hard to think of something new for it. But I do know it uses Iron Tail a lot in the anime. Or at least it used to like 500 episodes ago when I watched it. Basically the idea is that it specialized on Iron Tail so much its tail turned to metal. And when it evolves, Raichu's tail has also changed into a steel axe that can slice almost anything in half with great precision. And now Sand True and Sand Slash. They're actually some of my favorite Kanto Pokemon. And their new randomized type is Grass. The scales on Sand True's body reminded me of a brick road through a garden, so that's what I try to emulate. Maybe I'm biased because I made it, but I think it's actually really cute. And naturally, when it evolves, the spikes are replaced by leaves. Maybe it's because it's winter here and all the plants are currently dead and I'm really longing for summer, but I, it's just so nice to see green leaves on a Pokemon, I don't know. I just really want summer to come back. Now it's time to get into all the Nidorans. First we have the female line, and the new type is Dark. If you wanna be dark and edgy, you gotta wear black and red, just ask Gladion. And for Nidorina, I took some inspiration from Armor to make her look like a warrior. And she's a warrior to her queen, the Dark Queen of Hearts. Might have been inspired by Alice in Wonderland. And she doesn't battle much herself, but instead sends out her subjects. The horns on her head slightly resemble a crown, and the bigger it looks, the more respect she gets. But what about the males? What type do they get? They get dragon type. I made Nidoran slightly more reptile-like to give it that dragon feel while not looking entirely different. And basically just do the same for its evolutions. 
I don't have any fun backstories for them, but I do think it fits well with the female line. An evil queen and her dragon. Some nice fantasy right there, I guess. And the last evolution line for this video is Clefairies. And a new random type is Fighting. So I just gave it big boxing gloves. It's kind of silly and fun, and several Pokemon already have a boxing glove hands, like Hitmonchan. If you look at how silly several of the official Alolan forms are, Boxing Clefairy doesn't seem too unlikely. Its evolution to Clefable isn't much different, but it does have its ears back to make punching easier. I think it really does feel like the spirit of Pokemon to make something like this. And that's all of them for this time. Next time we're starting on number 37, which is Vulpix. How am I supposed to top the awesome Alolan Ice Vulpix? That's gonna be hard, but I will try. And I hope you enjoyed watching this video and hope you'll come back for the next one. Thanks for watching and bye until next time.